how to um, debug and step through a code that um, uh, while using uh, make files. So when you have a make files, you have an executable at the end of it, and when you run it, you want to step through the code. Um, it's a beginner level uh, tutorial, so it's going to be really quick. Um, so let's just run the server, uh, the UBC server. And let's say you're going to open the um, your term, like your first uh, project assignment. Let's say you're in the root folder here. You have everything uh, pretty much, I think it's the same except this one. This is just sometimes I do CMake instead of the other built systems, but uh, generators and systems. So, but anyways, we uh, in this in this one we're going to focus on make file. So the first thing you want to do is um, you see here there's no .vs file, right? Like the the folder that uh, VS Code generates when you when you actually start uh, customizing the workspace. For now, let's say we're just going to open um, this. All right, um, you can't really step through your code. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the debug here, and then we're going to say create a launch file. Right? This launch file has some settings that when you press F5, it's going to um, it's going basically to launch it and, and attach to that instance to make you like uh, uh, not attach it, so just launch it and make you debug that that executable. So let's use our compiler, whatever the command. Just say default compiler. Configuration here, and then yes, you want uh, so GDB. This is just a just a name. It's like a basically automatically generated for you. So you have the name. Uh, you have the type uh, CD debug. This is you. If you don't have that, that means you need to install this extension, the C C plus plus. Okay. Um, I guess it's here to, yeah. Uh, whether you, yeah, you need to install it local, and if you're in the remote, you need to install it in the remote as well. Uh, you need it to request a launch. I think there's attach as well, uh, attach option here, as well. Um, here in the program, you want to put your execution executable. Sorry, you want to put your executable um, name. In our case, if you don't know it, um, you can do uh, control tilde. That will, that will give you the, the prompt, and then from here, uh, you can just do make, and then you can see. Uh, you can see the output name. I believe it's PA1. So, sorry. Yeah, so it's this one that we want to uh, run, right? So, workspace, uh, workspace folder is, is, is actually this PA. So, so what you usually want to do, just to be sure, if you're in a different root folder, you can just do copy. Uh, sorry, uh, copy relative path or copy path, right? Um, so it's, I'm just going to show you here uh, relative path just because it's at the root. So, so that means workspace slash BA. Right? If it gave you anything else, just paste it right after uh, work, work, workspace folder. So if your program takes an argument, you put them here. If you want to stop at entry, Usually by default it's false, otherwise it just stops in main or something where, where it's like actually first started in the program. So you don't want, um, sometimes you want that, sometimes most likely you want, you don't want it. Working directory, um, we're just going to work from our current working directory, this one. Uh, the environment, we don't have any special environment variables. The uh, console, we can choose, um, I never played around with it, but I believe it should be integrated, but I don't know. We're just going to keep it default. Everything else is, here is default. One more thing that maybe we'll talk about it later, which is uh, we'll talk about it now. Um, let's just okay. We we're gonna we we're just gonna attach. See if this is actually running. Instead of running. So let's just name them. Name it problem. Here, so. uh, B what is it? Uh, B A one. Uh, let's run it. Let's see. So usually when you run from the command line, if you see an error, like see this segmentation fault, 
Otherwise, you will see it in the terminal here, and your program will like uh, will exit, and you won't know what 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 happened. Right? But this just shows you which file actually, um, which line actually it's uh, crashed on. Um, now let's say let's say I put a breakpoint here, or let's say you know, let's just go to main main CPP. Let's say I'll stop. Right. So now when I when I do um, start debugging, click this one, or I press F5, it should be the same thing. So see, stop here. And then if we go next. It's gonna go here now. If you see this, if you hover over it, you, you get all the variables here. Uh, if you have width and height, um, next, like you know, all, all the all the the current state of these variables. So basically, it's a good good uh, debugger. Simple but good. So let's stop it now. Now let's say you change some part of your code and you want to recompile. So what you can do before you launch again, you're gonna go like, oh, make. Um, make clean and then you're gonna do like make again you know um, it's it's not it's not very um, it's not very, like you, you'll be doing two things you're gonna be building first and then you're gonna be running right so what we're gonna do we're gonna create um, a task which is something that we run in the command before we launch every time right let's say you wanna build you, you wanna clean and build every time before you press play right be, be, sorry before you press uh, start debugging in that case, this is where we will need uh, the pre-launch command. Okay, so it's right pre here, and it should pop up. Um, so yeah, pre-launch command. It's the first one. You you, you can have uh, post launch command, I guess. Uh, post debug task, um, which like something after you you've done your debug. But let's try this one. Pre-launch task. Now let's just name it like make uh clean make first clean and make. okay now what you want to do is go you can do control command shift p and then you can say create uh, i think you can just do task it should suggest it for you so you can do configure default build task okay or you can go to um Help here and say task search. And then it should show you. Up. So. I don't want to help. <laughs> um, yeah, configure task and just do configure default build task. If you configure this one, then when you press shift command and P letter, uh, sorry, B as build, as in build, um, it, should, it should build, it should run that task command for you, right? So it says, hey, do you want to create it? Because it's the first time we do that. So it asks if you want to create a task for JSON. And all of these will be will be under it. So uh, we'll be under a folder here. I'll show you later. So we can have, there, there are so many uh, types of uh, tasks that you can run. But in our case, we just want to run a shell command, uh, which is whatever we run in the terminal here. Um, so we're going to press other. So let me just open it next to it. So have both of them available. So this task file is actually being created under VS Code. So we see our launch file and we see our task file. Here we want to name it exactly the same name as this one because basically this file we call it before it launch. We we'll call it whatever ID we put here. That ID will be a clean make. Okay? And it's type shell because this is a shell. Right? Um, also, what what do you want to run? So, if you want to just run hello, then every time before you launch, it's going to echo hello, which is not very useful. But what we want to do, we want to say make uh, clean. We want to clean our directory, and then we're going to say make um, make uh, jobs eight, which is just going to use eight cores while building it because I find it slow building like one file at a time some people like put larger numbers but this is basically just depends on the cores that you have on the machine please don't use high numbers if you are on uh public not public server but like usb server because you're just gonna make it slow for everybody but you know you know what to just make it eight, eight is like okay now 
um, we need to make this as a default. What I mean by default, it, um, let's, um, I don't know, it usually asks me to make it default. But for now, uh, you can run this by itself if you press Shift, Command, and P, right? So it asks you here, it just says like there's no default, right? So you press it, you'll see it will add something here. So you just like, okay, clean, make. Right? You see it added this one, it made it like uh, as default true, right? And it made it as a build task. Uh, so if we press Control B again, you should see in terminal that says, hey, it's executing this, it is executing this, um, this tasks, uh, this task. And you can see just our regular output. And if it fails, um, I think it won't run this. But I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that. So now, th this, this is how you run this by itself. However, if you run this, this will automatically run this file for you. So let's try it. Um, if you press debug, you see, it should build it up again for you. All automatic. And then start up demo, and there you go. That's it, folks. I hope you find this useful because I think uh, you guys suffer a lot <laughs> um, doing like print tips and stuff. And sorry for the mic, uh, for the mic 